Hello my friends. Welcome to my channel, Lindy's Magpie Reads. If you're new here, I'm Lindy. Special welcome to you. I love to talk about books, so if that's your jam, stick around. April is Poetry Month, so I have got poetry books to tell you about, and there are also readathons happening on BookTube. If you're not familiar with these readathons that I mention, look in the description box down below because I am going to link to fabulous booktubers who are hosting the readathons and their readathon announcements. So if you're lost, don't worry, there's more information down there. There's the Picture This Readathon hosted by the lovely Jack of Spread Book Joy and Shelley of Shelley Swearingen. And this is to encourage adults to read picture books. There's also Trans Girl April hosted by Kevy over at Shea Kevy, encouraging us to read books by trans authors. And there's People April hosted by Roz at Scalid Andling about the books and Elizabeth of Bouquins and Books. This is a readathon encouraging us to read nonfiction about people. So, one of the books that I've been reading that I just pick up every morning and read one letter from is this one, Care of by Ivan Coyote. It's fitting two of the readathons, people, it's letters to and from uh, Ivan Coyote, who's a Canadian storyteller and also is a trans man, non-binary person. So uh, this morning I did not read a letter because the letter yesterday morning made me cry and my eyes were all red and I did not want to be in front of the camera like that. So let me tell you about that letter. It started with a Facebook message from Farron, the uh, music artist, Canadian music artist, and it's clear that Ivan and Farron became friends. Uh, their experience of being uh, queer musicians of a certain age. Farron is a fair bit older and Ivan uh, obviously respects her as a, a butch elder, but in this first letter to Farron that's in the book, he decides to tackle a topic that has kept him from communicating with Farron for 15 months. And that is because she posted on her Facebook that she does not include trans women as her category of women. And it was breaking Ivan's heart because music, Farron's music, Shadows on a Dime, that album, meant so much to him. Uh, he listened to it so many times, had it in vinyl, in, then in cassette, and then in CD. And I'm the same way. Uh, I had the record first, um, and then now I have the CD, and I love listening to that album. And it hurt me too to hear Farron was basically being a turf, uh, and uh, yeah, I was very sad. What I didn't realize, I cried, and then I was thinking, okay, what am I going to excerpt from this to share what Ivan had to say? And I realized there was a second letter to Farron. Obviously, there had been some phone call communication back and forth and things were resolved and Farron was seeing things differently. Uh, oh, <laughs> I just felt so much better after reading the second letter. So that was in care of and I am still in progress with this one through April. I have big news about 
picture this, and that is that tomorrow morning I am going to be participating in a live event with Jack and Shelley and two other booktubers, Dia of Novel Idea and Alice of Alice in the Giant Bookshelf. We are going to be talking about why we as adults continue to love reading picture books. So if that topic interests you, uh, the event is going to be hosted over on Shelley's channel. So look for us there in Pacific time. That'll be at 6 a.m. tomorrow. And in Eastern time, it's uh, 9 a.m. And then over in England, it will be at 2 in the afternoon. So you'll have to figure out, if you're in a different time zone, figure out for yourself what that works out for you, but it'll be nice to see you there. So on to eight books that I have finished recently. Starting with this Canadian novel, Interesting Facts About Space. It's by Emily Austin. This is her uh, second book. The first one was Everyone in This Room Will Someday Be Dead. This one is uh, just as quirky and uh, heart-touching as the first. I like this one even better. Uh, it's in the voice of Enid, who is neurodivergent. She's a lesbian. She's, um, she has a lot of anxiety, neuroses, uh, she has a phobia of bald men, for example, and she's really worried about her mother who has mental illness, so she checks in on her, uh, on her mother often. I just really felt for Enid so much. She is addicted to listening to true crime podcasts, so you would think someone with high anxiety wouldn't, but there, she explains something about why she likes true crime and um, watching horror movies. I'll just read that section. She's with her mother at her place here. We're going to watch a scary movie. I felt like watching something frightening so I could exert power over it. I want to eat popcorn while I watch it and laugh while it tries to scare me. I could see that. Uh, Back when the movie Alien came out, my uh, younger sister Simone went to see it and then later on reenacted the whole movie for me in a hilarious way. <laughs> and so after that, when I did see the film, I found it very funny. <laughs> so it's all in our viewpoint, right? Uh, in this true crime podcasts listening, the very first sentence is, the teenage girl was brutally axed to death by her grandmother. And twice, a couple weeks ago, twice I was reading books where women were killing someone with an axe. And so this is the third, <laughs> just so strange. But the other strange thing is, there is also someone who throws his wife off of a balcony from 17 stories up, and that also uh, comes up in another novel that I read recently, or something very similar. So, go figure. Anyway, I found this really enjoyable. Um, so not just funny, but very touching and I do recommend it. And I picked up another book by Emily Austin. This is a collection of poetry called Gay Girl Prayers. Perfect for Poetry Month. And these are uh, riffs for queer individuals who were raised uh, Catholic or religious and uh, these are twists on 
Bible verses and uh, Christmas hymns and so on. I, I just have to read some to give you a, a, an example. This one's uh, taken from Joshua 2. Jesus's great-grandmother was a harlot and a saint. She was virtuous and worthy, not because of the time she hid men in her rafters to help them escape, but because she was intrinsically valuable, sacred like all sex workers, like all people, like you. And we have a play on Proverbs, chapter 17, verse 6. Newborn envies are the crown of old fruitcakes. The glory of baby gays is in their daddies. Fairies are the pride of their Aunt Dorothy. Butches are a blessing to femmes, stones, pansies, other butches, and androgens. They are a splendor to Earth's garden. Trans kids are the joy of their elders and their sports teams. Every fruit is a blessing. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, one more. Do you hear what I hear? Heaven and nature are singing. They're drag queens, they're harmonizing. Queer joy to the world, while two men slow dance. And I read a text from my friend, who is four months on tea, sharing their name is Felix now, which means happy. Repeat the sounding joy. There is a character who is by on primetime TV and a pride flag at City Hall. Repeat, repeat. There's a queer picture book display at the library. A kid is picking one out. His dad is smiling, saying, that's a good pick, buddy. And I'm going to tell someone I love them and they're going to tell me they love me back. And we're gonna get married and immaculately conceive a baby with our two holy spirits and a turkey baster. Or maybe we won't. Maybe I'll just write a poem about that person I love that gay people might feel happy reading. And when I'm gray, I'll remember them fondly, think of how lucky I am to have loved someone, and hum heaven and nature's song. Joy to the world. Well, so that was Gay Girl Prayers. And I want to direct you to Sean the Book Maniac's channel where his mystery guest for Friday Reads was none other than my sweetie, Laurie McFadden, who is also a poet. And uh, she talked about her poetry, read from her work, and also talked about uh, gay girl prayers in that interview. So do check that out. And next, I have a graphic novel by the trans non-binary cartoonist Sage Coffee, Wine Ghost Goes to Hell. Now, I first encountered Sage Coffee in a, a anthology that I talked about in my previous video. It's called The Outside, and it's led me to other works, including this one, very fun. It's described as, when Wine Ghost was alive, she was a booze-soaked train wreck. Now that she's dead, well, to be honest, not much has changed. <laughs> so, I think Wine Ghost has uh, created, uh, based on um, one of those little um, caps that you can get to um, cover your wine after the cork comes out. I'm not sure. Anyway, so Wine Ghost is in hell and one of her friends from back on earth shows up and is looking for a place to stay in the inner circle of hell. And so they go looking for somewhere to, somewhere to live. And here's some examples of the places they get to. There's a hotel room for rent, good for big family or only one person. Got a text someone named Uncle Louie to let us up. Uh, meanwhile, they're looking at this other place that seems very spacious. Uh, Seb, that's uh, Wine Ghost's friends, asks, can we put in some furniture or like a bathroom? 
No. Paint the walls? No. This place is ever expanding. There are no walls. And another place uh, seems to be inside the mouth of a creature. Consistent insulation, nice decor, interesting layout, good bones. <laughs> uh, I love little details like the, the teeth on the side and there's a crown as well. They even have a look at uh, Baba Yaga's hut. Yeah. There's lots of fun going on in Wine Ghost. And next I want to tell you about an audiobook, Anita De Monte Laughs Last. It is by Zoshio Gonzalez, and the uh, story has three separate narratives. And the audiobook has three different uh, readers for each of those three narrators. It's really a good production. We start out with Anita in 1985 in New York City and it is her ghost who is narrating uh, and this is read by Jessica Pimentel who is an American actress and songwriter and singer. There's her husband Jack. Uh, he's also an artist. Anita and Jack are both artists. He's narrated by Jonathan Gregg. And then there's uh, Raquel in 1998. She is studying art history in Providence and she is uh, read by Stacy Gonzalez. Anita is a Cuban American and she is passionate. She is angry. We find out how she died and uh, Later on, Raquel is looking into the art of Jack Martin and hears about Anita De Monte's art. This is like it's got both that mystery element of dis of discovering um, what exactly happened, but also these great characters. And I discovered that this is based on a true story of Anna Mendieta and her husband Carl Andre and uh, the mysterious death of Mendieta which is uh, still uh, causing protests when Carl Andre's art is being featured in museums so uh, Google that if you're interested like I was. Amazing. Uh, True Story is amazing. The book is fabulous. So, I highly recommend it. So, we're going to stay with the art world for the next two books. They're both picture books for uh, Picture This and People April, True Stories of Artists. Starting with Out of This World, The Surreal Art of Leonora Carrington. It's by Michelle Markell with illustrations by Amanda Hall. Uh, Leonora Carrington, she was born in 1917 to a rich English family and all she wanted to do was art. She was a rebel, she was unruly and uh, she got kicked out out of several boarding schools but eventually her parents gave in and let her study art. Now, Amanda Hall, uh, that was a British illustrator, used watercolor inks and gouache layered with pencil crayons to create this art. So one of the things about books about artists is that the illustrator has the task of trying to capture the feel of the painter's work but not uh, including the actual paintings. And there is quite a bit of the feel of it, especially in the painting of the giantess. Often an adult can get a lot more information about 
the, a person that a picture book biography is about by reading the author's note and illustrator's notes at the end, as in this case. There's also a selected bibliography of uh, five different titles. All of these titles are aimed at adults, by the way. Well, that's a good example of what adults can get from picture books. And for me, when I read a review of this in school, I think it was in School Library Journal, it was a professional review anyway, they pointed out the unfortunate use of the word exotic in connection to Mexico because uh, that's where uh, Carrington ended up moving and living for quite a long period of time. I missed that entirely which pointed out my own biases that calling um, the plants in Mexico exotic didn't strike me as something that might be othering to Mexican or Mexican-American kids reading this um, book. So it opened my own eyes to how um, we need to be so careful about language. It's an American book, so it's reasonable to expect that a lot of American children will read it. There are many Mexican-Americans um, parts of the southern U.S. used to be Mexico, so calling it exotic, I can see where the problem, I can see where the problem lies. And this next picture book is also about, about an artist, Alma Thomas. It's called A Blaze with Color, and it's by Jean Walker Harvey with illustrations by Love is Wise. Love is Wise is a non-binary illustrator. I got really interested in their art because of this book. That's another reason why uh, picture books excite me. I'm going to link to the artist websites for all three of the picture books that I talk about. And that's where I found this illustration by Love is Wise. Gender Expansive Community, Lead Us to Liberation. So this is not from the picture book, but just want to uh, share some of their great art. I think Wise did a better job of capturing the spirit of the painter's work. There are even two photographs at the end of um, actual paintings that Alma Thomas created. Her story is amazing. She was born in 1891 in Georgia and she and her siblings weren't allowed to use the library so their family had a large library. Later on their family moved to Washington DC so that the girls could attend higher education. Uh, uh, Alma ended up being a art teacher for many years in um, Maryland and Delaware and Washington DC. It wasn't until she was almost 70 years old that she started focusing on her own artwork and she has, um, she has this abstract style. It's just stunning. She was the first black woman to have a solo show at the Whitney Art Museum in New York City. And later, so long after her death, Barack and Michelle Obama uh, bought uh, her painting Resurrection and it was the first painting by a, a black woman artist to be added to the White House collection. The book opens with a quote by Alma Thomas, through color I have sought to concentrate on beauty and happiness rather than on man's inhumanity to man. Isn't that fabulous? That quote brings to mind uh, a poem by Jack Gilbert. 
He's an American poet born in 1925. Uh, most of his adult life, I believe, he lived in Greece. But the poem, A Brief for the Defense, I just want to quote um, one little part from it. We must risk delight. We can do without pleasure, but not delight, not enjoyment. We must have the stubbornness to accept our gladness in the ruthless furnace of this world. To make injustice the only measure of our attention is to praise the devil. If you want to read uh, the full poem, and I suggest you do, I will include a link to where you can find it online down below. Next up, another picture book, You So Black by Teresa the Songbird. This is an adaptation of a performance piece that she's got online. It has received millions of views. I'm not exaggerating. I'm going to link it down below. And this one is shortened down and illustrated by London Lad, who's using bright mixed media collage illustration. This is just so um, emotionally fulfilling and rich and joyous and the illustrations match so perfectly. I highly recommend you so black. And last up, another work of poetry. This is a collection by Renee Watson, Black Girl, You Are Atlas. And it is illustrated by Equa Holmes, who has illustrated a lot of picture books as well in a, this gorgeous collage style. I will read just one poem from here. One of the poems, by the way, is called Resurrection. And I wonder if there is any connection to that painting by Alma Thomas. This is the poem called Turning Sweet 16. But what if I want to be sour? What if when you ask me, how are you, I tell you the truth? I am not fine all the time. Sometimes I cry myself to sleep to drown out the moaning of my 85-year-old grandfather who is losing his mind, can't remember my name, is afraid of me when I come home unannounced. Sometimes I am jealous of the thinner, lighter girls who can shop at any store with their just right waists and just right breasts and just right hips. Sometimes I'm worried about my family. Do we have enough money? Will I come home from school one day and find my grandfather dead? How much more hardship can my mother take before she breaks? One day, while walking home by myself, minding my business, minding my mind, turning these questions into prayers, God, please help us. A voice calls out to me, but he is not God, yells out, a pretty girl like you ought to be smiling tells me men don't want no woman who looks so mean. And so I learn how to keep a twinkle in my eye just after a good cry, learn how to toss my sorrow in the ocean of my laughter, how to bury every fear in the crater of my smile. I know how to be sweet, I do. And I know very well that two sweet things cause decay, rot you from the inside out. Black Girl, You Are Atlas. I think this is my favorite of all of the books I've told you about. And there's, they were all great, but this is my fave. Do check it out. And one more thing I want to mention, the Carol Shields Prize shortlist has been announced. Daughter by Claudia Day and Burnham Wood by Eleanor Catton are both on it. There are three other titles, including this one that I'm currently reading, Brotherless Night. And I will be letting you know in probably my next video what I think of it. 
But well, that is all I have got for you today. So please let me know what you think of any of these books that I've talked about. Let me know what you think about poetry and picture books. Do you read picture books? Oh, please check us out tomorrow in our live event over on Shelley's channel. And in the meantime, happy reading, everybody. It's so good to hear from you. So say hello in the comments down below and I will see you all soon. I'm going to leave you with just a few images from Butchart Gardens. Things are blooming all over the place there. Enjoy. Bye for now.